Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be doing a winter snowy cabin. Actually, it's a church, I guess, chapel, yeah. <laughs> Yosemite <laughs> Chapel. <laughs> this picture was submitted to me by uh, one of my members on Facebook, uh, my Thankful Art Group, and I fell in love with it. I just love the look. This is actual an actual place uh, in Yosemite. Is that California? You're not. I've got my husband Mark here with me today. He's supposedly helping me. <laughs> Useless as usual. <laughs> Wyoming? <Nevada>? Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere out west. Yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. Anyhow, I guess we should have looked that up. Yeah, before. I'm sure people in chat will tell us okay, here in a second. Hopefully. So. <laughs> Keep us in line. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, we do live shows on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Um, well, yep. 2016. So yes. if you're watching in 20 years or so, we may be a different schedule. But right, right, right. <laughs> right now, we are doing live shows on Saturdays at 2 and Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Central. So yeah. um, they said California. California. I was right. I thought. Yeah, I thought you're so. smart. I I went to college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're using acrylics today. I've got my colors out here. Um, I kept them in a plastic bag to kind of keep them fresh. Um, and they'll stay fresh for about a week if you keep spritzing them. Um, so if you, you know, can't finish this in one setting, you don't have to throw away your paints. Um, we've got a fairly limited palette. We're going to probably mix um, a lot of colors today. So, but uh, light blue permanent, light ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue green shade. Yellow Oxide, Hansa Yellow Medium, or Cadmium Yellow Medium would work. Pyrrole Crimson, um, but really any red is going to do fine. Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Carbon Black, and this is uh, Unbleached Titanium and Titanium White. Unbleached Titanium is just a, a mixed white that's got a little bit of Yellow Oxide in with it. Um, and these two colors are added on. They're just pre-mixed colors. This one is like your Thalo Blue Plus White. And this one is ultramarine blue plus white, but we're going to be using a lot of blues today, so I thought I'd just go ahead and throw those out there on the palette and save some time. But don't feel like you have to go out and buy those if you don't have them. Um, so this is my example painting, and I think we're going to use the same basic color scheme. I might change a little bit in the background here because I feel like the trees kind of, this tree especially, um, kind of lost some def definition back here. So I think um, we will get started here. I've got a 16 by 12 inch canvas panel. This is a Blick art materials. It came in like 24 pack or something, um, pretty cheap. Uh, so if you're just a beginner, this is a good thing to practice on because they're not super expensive. And then, you know, if you do something really good on here, you could always take it to a larger canvas. Um, this can be done on any size canvas that you want and I've got a few brushes but I'll just introduce those as we go and Mark may have to do commentary for us today if my voice goes out on me yes I'll be doing the play-by-play -play action here <laughs> so we'll but, see how we'll see how my voice how long my voice lasts today <laughs> I feel better I just don't sound all that great today so that's my problem every time I get a cold I kind of lose my voice it's just what happens I'm moving my water a little closer so you can see when I'm dipping in there so I'm wetting down I've got a I think this is about a one inch brush here uh, flat brush and we're just gonna kind of do a basic background here there's actually like a rocky cliff behind um, the chapel it's kind of nestled up into the mountains um, so we're gonna sort of replicate that a little bit um, so I think I'm going to use my warmer, like browns in those, in this back area and maybe do a few light blue highlights on it. So I'm just starting with unbleached titanium and a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to just brush that back here. I might even use a little bit of black to make it a little bit grayed or even, actually let's use a little bit of ultramarine blue. That'll make a nice gray for us. I don't want to go too dark right now. I'm going to add a little bit of dark on top of this. So kind of a medium value 
sort of light on the light side. And we'll come down all the way to about, oh, right there. We'll, we'll go down well past half, probably at the quarter uh, mark there with this. So in this whole bottom hat section will be a little bit more on the blue side. So I'm just going to fill this in quickly. Add a little bit of water to my brush to make my paint move. And, and I'm just going to do a little random X strokes. I'm not really worried too much about this. This is going to all kind of blend into the background. Um, or hopefully it will, if we do this right. Um, actually, this water is way too close. That's why I kept it over there before. <laughs> now I'm seeing why I did that. Okay, got to get my hand in there. <clears throat> Working on cough medicine here today, so we'll hopefully have our words correct. <laughs> And a little working on some this is I did the same thing when I was doing my my ornaments too this is the second show I've had to work this season I've just went from one cold to another it's crazy it's this time of year I guess I blame it on the yeah. shopping we went out shopping on Thanksgiving and mo both Mark and I are sick this week so. yeah <laughs> I think we caught something. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grabbing a little bit of ultramarine blue now. I'm going to add a little bit of blue down here. Honestly, I'm making this up as I go along. This, these pictures, um, I, I used several different reference pictures, and they all kind of had different levels of snow and different levels of fogginess and clarity and for this one I kind of trying to keep it very simple um, more on the impressionist sort of type painting when I say impressionist it's just if you're not familiar with that term it just means that we're not uh, we're not going for realism it's a little bit more of just you know expressing the general gist of the whatever we are trying to create but not you know working on colors and catching the light but not really necessarily going for ultra realism so I think that's what we're going to be doing today a little bit more like a paint party style type painting just to make it a little bit easier for those who are trying this for the first time this is um I would say this is a kind of a medium difficulty painting I don't think it's super going to be super hard for uh you know, somebody who is new to painting, but uh, I don't know if I would do this on my first try around, but you could. I mean, just jump on in there, both feet. That's right. I need more of my unbleached titanium here. If you notice, I'm just kind of using. Um, really not have any rhyme or reason to this. I'm just kind of doing sort of random sh shapes and colors so that uh, it's all sort of blended together in this background. Let me add a little bit more of this dark down here. We're going to have some trees in this area, so this will all be covered up with other colors. So it honestly doesn't matter too much down here at the bottom. And I need to let that dry before I do anything else on it. You may need to use your hair drying skills today. And Can do. I'm on standby. <laughs> okay, let's grab some more of the white for down here. We'll use a little, a little bit of our thalo blue. Ooh, that's a pretty color. You just Did you see how much I used there? I literally just picked up you know, a teeny, teeny, tiny touch of it. And look how vibrant that color is. It's such a bright um, color. You really don't need a lot. So, And I still had all these other colors in my brush. So it's all mixing together with those browns and 
things. And that'll actually help it all look sort of cohesive. I'm going to grab some of that on purpose. I got a question that if they don't have the uh, unbleached titanium white, mm -hmm. what would uh, be a good substitute? The um, white plus yellow oxide makes a similar color. Um, let me see if I can mix some. Well, no, it's already in there. I'll try to mix some here in a little bit, but um, if you have a yellow oxide or something like that, uh, okay. or even raw umber, just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, uh, just something to sort of brown up your white. It's just kind of um, a little bit warmer than straight white. Right. It's a color that I use in almost every single one of my paintings because, and it, there's a there's a color called Titan Buff in Golden. It's a, it's called Titan Buff. I find that it's a little bit less uh, opaque in the in the Golden. It's a little bit more of a transparent white, which I don't like as much. Um, so I like the Liquitex Titanium White. They're they're basically equal though. I mean, they're very similar colors. <clears throat> okay, and I'm just kind of blending out that edge there. And I'll put in shadows and things here in a little bit, but that's sort of all we need to do for that. I'm going to see. I might. Uh, I probably ought to have you blow dry this, honey. Just in case. We might have to blow dry it a couple of times today. So we'll do that. All right, if you're first time to my channel, you're gonna, we're gonna bring out Stickman here. He's our unofficial mascot, and we add something to him every week. Our previous Stickman uh, got full, so we are on Stickman number two. He got antlers and some mountains last week, and so today we're gonna add a pine tree on here, I think. We'll use some phthalo blue and yellow oxide to make a green. We'll just put a nice little pine tree down here for him. We add something to him every week just to kind of go along with whatever we're painting. Grab some of my white and we'll add a little bit of white highlights to our pine tree. All right. That's it. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting one. We'll see what he <laughs> turns out looking like with those antlers. He's already got a weird start. So <laughs> Mark, Mark drew the initial, um, that's his, his artwork. So he had to be included in the show. So we, we let him yeah, I think so. Contribute. Mark contributed Stickman. All art is valid. Well, right. I did the hardest part there. <laughs> and I feel like it's good to play sometimes, you know, just to kind of be silly and don't take this stuff too seriously. You know, you can get pretty tense when you're painting sometimes. So I think it's good sometimes to just kind of do some doodling and mess around and so when you're saying silly and playing around you're not referencing my stick man <laughs> no no it's you like your i'm you're, talking about my stuff that okay. i'm putting on stick man oh okay good good yeah not yours all right. not your stuff at all because <laughs> i'd be offended would you yes i'd be very offended okay i'll be careful of your okay that's better feelings there <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I'm going to use some phthalo blue here again. I'm going to get a little bit extra this time, and I'm going to make a burnt sienna phthalo blue kind of mixture here. I might add a little bit of burnt umber, see what that does. Okay, so I'm going to make kind of a gray color, add a little bit more of that brown. 
honestly, you could do this with just black and white too. So don't feel like you have to mix this color if you don't want to. And I might even just add a little bit of, I'll do a gray over here with some unbleached titanium and black. So I'll have two different grays going on. All right, so I'm gonna use just a little bit. I've, I've uh, mixed of these colors and then I'm gonna just kind of scoop through my paint just a little bit. So I have just a little bead of paint on the top here and I'm gonna turn my canvas here and I'm just gonna skim, almost flat, I'm just gonna skim my brush along that might be a little dark. <clears throat> Let me pick up some of this other color. Let me add a little bit of this unbleached titanium. I feel like it's a little bit dark. Maybe use my scraper. This is going to look really weird, so don't worry about it. We're going to kind of paint over everything with a little bit of white, so this is just going to be our initial coat, so don't freak out if it looks really weird. And a lot of times in painting, things look worse before they kind of start to come together. So I'm sort of just creating some textures in this background to kind of simulate rock, maybe. If you look at my example, you can see some of what I'm doing back in here. See, so I'm going to kind of cover it with some blues and things. So that's kind of what we're going for. <clears throat> So trust me, it's going to look weird, but <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> I'm going to need a lot more of that. And let's try some ultramarine blue and see that, what that does with the burnt umber. That makes a nice gray. I actually like that one better. Let me use that one. It's catching on the canvas a lot. I don't know. I want it to kind of be a little bit thicker in some places. And I'm going to bring it down almost to the bottom here. I'm not going to, um, actually, I probably ought to just go ahead and bring it down to the bottom so that I make sure that it's all, there's some areas that are lighter than others in the picture that I have. There's like, I don't know, some little, like, little bushes and things. So you can leave some gaps in there for some lighter, even add a little bit of the lighter color but I'm going to go fairly dark with this because I think that when I did my example at, especially back here I think it would have benefited from some of these darker tones back there underneath the tree but we can't go too dark because we want the tree to show up too the tree branches shouldn't have to be like a shade darker than the this background so it's kind of a medium gray Just laying down my brush and sort of wiggling it and creating some interesting texture on my canvas. <clears throat> what were the colors that you're mixing and doing right now? Um, these are the blues with these browns. So both of the blues and okay. uh, thalo blue and thalo or uh, ultramarine blue and brown. So okay. um, burnt sienna and burnt umber. Both. Might try. I feel like it's getting like little dips and dots that I don't want. So I'm gonna grab some of this. I'm gonna grab my scraper here and use it sideways and ooh, scrape some interesting bigger things through there to break that up. This is really just kind of a matter of experimentation because you're not gonna really be able to control what this looks like exactly. So just kind of go with it. Don't freak out too much if it kind of, you know, does some weird stuff. Sometimes the weirder stuff is what you end up liking the most at the end. So just kind of play with this. I, I probably could have used my bigger credit card, but I'm using it to clip my mic on my <laughs> shirt. So <laughs> I don't have one with me here. <laughs> 
I'm trying to keep my mic from scraping on my shirt. Okay, I need to mix some more of these gray up. Picking up a little bit of water. Really, for these kind of dry brush type techniques, you don't need a lot of water, but you just need to keep your brush hydrated a little bit. So I'm going a little bit more blue on this one. And I might, maybe would be better with a little bit bigger brush is what I'm thinking. Let me try it with a bigger brush. Yeah, that looks good. Of angling them a little bit to this side the cliff side kind of had a I don't know horizontal uh, ledges so this is very random Hope I'm not losing folks here. No, you got 148 watching right now. Wonderful. 110 likes. So we appreciate everybody joining us on this down here in the south of the United States. A cold, rainy day. Yeah. Kind of from the ICU here, recovering from colds and <laughs> all that stuff. Yes. So if you just quite a week. Yeah, if you're just joining us, you can uh, join us in chat. If you have got any questions, go ahead and post them in all caps so I can see them. Uh, so I, I do miss them, but the moderators in there are also very helpful in answering the questions. If you're new to the channel, you can hit the subscribe button and like. Appreciate it. And all the, uh, the descriptions for all, all the uh, paints and brushes Angela's using today are down below. There's links to Amazon to purchase some of this stuff too, so... Trying to make it easy for you. Yes. Good job, honey. Thanks. I'm trying to get better at that. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good. Go to announcer school. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've had to kind of work on my voice a little bit. <clears throat> Somebody told me I had vocal fry, one of the first videos that I did. I had to look it up. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> vocal fry. <laughs> yeah. Well, today I definitely have vocal fry because yeah. my vocal cords are fried. But The raspiness. Mm, yeah. It's that raspiness in my voice. It's pretty much natural, but I do try to talk on a little bit more through my nose so that I have a little bit higher pitch when I do my videos. But my students always tease me that I don't sound like myself. <laughs> <laughs> when I, <laughs> they're like, I listened to your video. I wasn't sure it was you because it didn't sound like you. I'm like, yeah, well, that's yeah. my that's my broadcast voice. <laughs> Just be yourself. Oh, that's all that matters. I know. I, I, I can mix up your voice. How do you want it to sound over here? Oh, don't do it. Oh, I can mix everything up for you. Uh, you do it on your <laughs> voice. <laughs> Yeah, we can make it really, really sound kind of funny, though. I know. Did you do it? Uh, no, well, a little bit. <laughs> I can set it to echo. He can make himself sound like, like he's the voice of God. <laughs> 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 That's pretty awesome. Okay, so I've got kind of my darker tones in there now. Now I'm just going to kind of play with it and lighten it up in little places. Um. It looks really weird, but it'll look good for the background. It says it's going to kind of all sort of dis disappear behind all these trees and things. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to do some of this lighter blue, light blue permanent, I think. And I need to spray my palette. It's getting a little bit sticky tonight. It's dry in here. Hmm. Or today, yeah, I guess. We, we got a lot of, what? Yeah, we got a lot of dry, dry air here. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm going to put out a little bit. Know that. My ultramarine blue. I'm running out. Oops, did I touch my mic? A little bit, but that's not Sorry, too bad. I'm trying not to. This ultramarine blue and me are nemesis. <laughs> it does not want to open for me. I've already used the the pliers on it once. Better behave itself. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of this cap pretty soon. Yeah, we need to have a sit-down meeting with the uh, Golden People and yeah. design up a cap that's exactly. a little bit more durable there. Uh -huh. Exactly. All right, I'm mixing a little bit of my um, light blue permanent. Just want this kind of lighter blue thing going on. And... I'm going to do some of this over the top of what I've done here. Turn it a little bit. And now I'm going to be a little bit more deliberate with where I'm placing it and think maybe I want to put some highlights or something in some areas if I've got some um, you know places where I didn't really like what what it looked like. I'm going to kind of fix it maybe a little bit grab even a little tiny bit of white and maybe now I'm going to use the white very sparingly because I don't want it super light back here but I can use it in a couple places just mixed with this um, light blue I think I'm just going to kind of brush it on. I need to make sure that this is dry under here because I don't want to do uh, cover too much of. Well, if I if I touch it onto the paint while it's drying, like over here, it might lift it. So I need to be careful. But I'm just going to kind of blend a little bit of this color over the top. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. All right. So, and if you don't have this light blue, light um, blue permanent, it was the thalo blue plus white. So, it's just the, and I'm adding even a little bit more of the white there. It's got a little bit of the brown in it to tone it down, so it's not so super light. It's kind of. Using these kind of brown colors for the mountain side. And these blues will make them kind of look a little bit farther away, maybe. That's the hope, at least. <clears throat> Most of this section over here is going to be covered with trees. A lot of it actually is going to be covered with trees. There's really very little of it that's going to be showing in between here, but it does make a difference, so we want to take some time to do it right. <clears throat> Since we have all these trees at different heights, it would be hard to kind of figure out and try to paint around them. It's just better to do the whole thing, and then we don't have to worry about painting around anything. And we can say we're done, right? We're all done. We're done. <laughs> yeah. You just, it's one of those things where you have to unfocus your eyes and <laughs> it kind of pops out at you 3D. Can't you see the, can you see the, yeah, the chapel? Yeah, I there? see the chapel right there. <laughs> I don't know what everybody's talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're a mess. You know, people tuning in right now, they're like, what the heck's going on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't look like, like trees or a chapel. <laughs> what are we doing today? <laughs> I know. I'll probably need to leave some. I'm going to grab some brown here. I'll probably need to leave some darker areas in this behind this tree here. So. All right. Let's get in there. 
I kind of have a feeling this is going to be a two-hour painting. We're already like 30 minutes and we're not even getting done with the background. So kind of figured it took me a while to do the example. Um, but it's got a lot of layers. It's worth it's worth the time to put these layers in. It really is. It makes a big difference with your paintings. If you... <clears throat> Layer, layer, layer. All right. Layers are good in cakes and lasagna. <laughs> and painting. And painting, yes. Yes. So layers are good. <laughs> we like layers. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're a mess. All right. I think that that's pretty good. We'll call that good. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I think I can well, I think I can probably do the trees on top. It's not super dry or I just, super I can just dry it over your shoulder for you as you're going, wouldn't that be annoying? <laughs> <laughs> you can go ahead and dry it real quick. Go ahead. It won't take long. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to use a, um, well, I'm going to use some chalk first. And I, what I thought I would do is do these background trees first. So I've got these trees here that are all kind of behind my front trees. So these three and this one are my um, foreground trees. Uh, so this one and this one and these two are going to be farther away. I'm going to do those in kind of more blue tones, a little bit softer colors so that they fade away a little bit. And then this tree um, will be put in as well. So we'll do all those first. And then we'll do the foreground and the chapel on top of all of it. And then put in our, our shadows and things as we work. So that's the idea. All right. Good timing, huh? So my chapel is roughly going to go on the third. So if you kind of take your um, canvas and split it into thirds, the chapel is sort of um, right on this third on this side, and it's down really low. So because we want a nice room for the um, spire to go, so it's not quite a third this way. It's more like a quarter of the way. So if you split your canvas here and here, your chapel is going to start about right here. So this is the center of my chapel right here. And I'm just going to do a nice long line here. And then my two boundaries um, are going to be on either side of it. And I think that that's probably about right. Just want to make sure that these are all horizontal. Um, and yeah, I think that that's about right. The The height is about, so from here to here and here to here is about the same. And then the spire is just a little bit taller than that again. So it's, if you take um, maybe from the bottom, yeah. So one, two, three, and then maybe a little bit taller for the spire, if that makes sense. I just use my fingers. It's kind of a, and then from here to here, um, it's a little bit wider this way than this. So go a little bit wider with it than you do tall right here. That makes sense. This is really scientific. We're not, you know, getting too much into measurements or anything like that, but um, we'll just get the, as close as we can. Um, so that'll be the top of my church there. Something around there. So I'm just drawing that in, in chalk right now. Uh, you probably can't even see it. Let me do it in white. So here's my center line. Is that better? And then my church there. This spire is, or the, the, the slope of the roof is very tall on this chapel. So um, so our tree is going to go behind it. It's going to go behind this spire and 
up around it. So I just wanted to draw that in so I kind of knew where to put this large tree that kind of meanders around the side here and goes behind the spire and fills in this whole area. And now I'm really liking this dark blue and brown background because I think I can I can already tell it's going to turn out really nicely with the when we put the white on these branches. So and then it kind of comes off this way and has a few little I'm not going to do too much with my chalk. I'll just kind of draw it as I go with my paintbrush, but um yeah, and it comes out to about where the, it comes out a little bit past where the um, roof line here ends. So go ahead and extend it off this side quite a bit. And then most of this is going to be covered up by this big pine tree that's a little bit taller than the roof of the chapel. And it fills in this whole area here. But we don't have to worry about painting this in yet. This will be our last one, but we're going to do this one that's sort of off to the side here and a little bit farther away so it'll be a little higher and then there's going to be one kind of right behind the chapel there that's a little bit taller than it and then this huge one right here but this is our foreground tree so then we're going to do another big one that's even taller than that and it's even taller than the spire, so it's taking up this whole room here. It's pretty narrow, though. Then another one back here. And then our tree on this side is going to fill in right here. And then we'll have a small baby one right in here. So I think that that's our good placement. Um, that's all I'm going to do. Oh, I don't even think you can see those other trees there. You see that? You can see them a little bit? Okay, I wasn't doing it very dark. <clears throat> okay, so if you want to, I did a um, I did a pine tree using my fan brush. Well, I don't have the example with me. Um, where is that painting that I did a couple weeks ago that has the the barn in the snow? Um, I was going to show that tree just to kind of show the difference. Okay, so there's this tree, right? Um, and it's much more kind of realistic looking a little bit, and I used the fan brush for it. So if you want to do these trees for this painting um, in this style, you can kind of just watch the end. It's toward the end of this video um, where I did the fan brush tree. Um, but I think for this one, I kind of wanted to do the a sort of brush stroke tree because pictures that I had had these big clumps of snow. Um, and I just kind of thought I liked that look, you know, a little, little bit more impressionist feeling. So, um, but you can do it either way. So I'm just going to do it this way today. Um, and then, you know, you'll have two different ways of doing a pine tree. So sometimes you feel like a fan brush, sometimes you don't. <laughs> that could be a song. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like a nut. Is that the? <laughs> yep. So uh, we had a, a question for some people that may be new to your channel and just uh -huh. discovering you. Um, yes. What uh, What got you interested in art? Um, you know, I think Crayolas had a lot to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Because, man, those Crayola boxes came all mixed up. It used to bug the snot out of me. <laughs> First thing I had to do is dump out all those crayons and put them in order. You had to put the reds with the reds mm -hmm. and the yellows and all through the rainbow and put them back in the box the right way. So they, it must have been an engineer that, I don't that, know. that did the packing. I think so. Probably. I think probably. <laughs> man, that really blew my four-year-old mind. I just did not... Could not handle that. So I've been pretty much fascinated with color since a very young age. <laughs> <laughs> Had some definite ideas about the way things should be. <laughs> very organized. Yes. I still do that with my colors. They're all in their places. They've all got their little cubbies and they've got... Yeah. <laughs> and you have your one drawer there that has each color. You know, yellows, reds, yep. blues labeled. Yeah, if you've ever watched my live chats, I, I went through one day and kind of showed on my 
Facebook page. I do live chats on Mondays. And I went through and showed all my organization on my paint things. I'm pretty anal about it. That is one of my pet peeves. I do not like it when I can't find stuff. Ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber here. Just kind of toning down that blue so it's not sort of in your face. It's a little bit more faded. And then I'm going to add a little tiny bit of white, but I don't want too much white. I'm going to keep it pretty dark. And I think I'll probably use this color as my highlight color on it since it's in the same family. And we'll use this as our background tree here. I just need it dark enough to... Um, there you go. I'm using a number four. This is about a half inch flat. You could pretty much use any any flat brush, even a filbert would work. And I'm just doing these kind of cone shaped um, right now. I'm not going to worry too much about the um, too much about it you know, looking like a tree yet. It's not going to really, it's it's going to, you know, it's got these blues, so it's not going to really look like a pine tree. You could do this in green. If it bugs you to do a blue tree, totally, you know, you're, you have my permission to do it in green. Like, I get that. That is not natural. I get it. I do. But this is an artistic choice, so just go with it. Um, and I'm not really going to fill in all of the tree because it's going to be covered up by these two ones here. So um, I'm just going to do it like that. And I think I'll do this one back here in this same color scheme. Maybe even this one. I don't know. I don't want to do, do them all matchy-matchy. I kind of want to do them a little bit different. So the top, I'm just kind of tapping and pulling to the side so that these edges are a little bit rough and just kind of rocking it back and forth, sort of tap, 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 and then turning it and tap, 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 turning it. And I'm tapping it as I kind of twist it side to side like this. Um, this is going to be all dark down here, but you'll see a little bit of this tree back here. So back when, you're, like color. when you're talking about the fan brush, if somebody doesn't uh -huh. have one, what's a good alternative or something that would get I the mean, same looks? You could get something similar with the Deerfoot stippler if you had one of those. Um, you just have to use the tip of it um, to do. I did the background of these trees with it, but I wasn't really liking how it was looking. It didn't give me as much control. So, um, But yeah, use, you know, like the way I'm using this, if you notice that the, the tip of it is kind of fraying, because I'm tapping straight down on it. So it is almost acting like a fan brush, it's only it's flat, it's not got the curved edge. So, um, you know, definitely a flat brush will, will work in a pinch, you know, instead of a fan brush. Um, yeah, I'm kind of liking that. I think okay. those are looking good. And then the next question is, uh, how do you choose the different colors for your painting, for your palette? I mean, a lot of times it has to do with, um, I'm going to make a darker blue now and just add a few little dark areas into these trees. Um, kind of think zigzag. So leave leave some little light areas and dark. I'm just kind of zigzagging these little dab, dabs. So there's layers. I need to zoom in. I feel like I'm a little too far away. Let me know if I go off camera. Um, <laughs> as well as monitor chat and everything else you're doing. Um, well, I mean, obviously these colors aren't in the original photograph, so I'm just sort of playing with the idea that cooler colors, blues and purples are going to be farther away to your eye, um, and the fact that we're doing kind of a wintry theme um, the, I kind of just wanted to go with more of a blue, green, you know, just blue, um, in general feeling so that it feels icy and stuff. So that's why I'm doing this and, you know, going with the more kind of artistic. But also for me, it gives it more of a cold feeling. Yeah, that's the thing. It feels more icy yeah. having these colors. Um, okay, I'm going to add the light ultramarine blue and I'm going to grab just a touch of white so that I've got a kind of slightly mixed on my brush and I'm just going to start at the top and I'm just kind of using the corner of my brush and I'm just going to dab whoops little random 
shapes um, into my tree. See? They're not, if you look at, if you look up some photographs of trees in the snow, they, the snow catches on these, on the tips of the branches. There'll be shadows under here, and then there'll be little pockets where the sunlight's hitting it. So that's what we're kind of trying to sort of capture the feeling of. I'm liking that. Yeah, I like that. So this is just a, you know, like I said, artistic choice. You could totally do this in greens. Um, if you're doing this in greens, I would do these ones with lighter greens and then do these ones with the bolder, uh, darker greens. So that's just up to you. So I'm going to set it down at the top here. Sort of just making the these ones in the middle are going to kind of be straight dots because they're kind of coming straight at you and then as you go to the sides you can kind of sweep them to the side a little bit these brush strokes can kind of turn and face outward a little bit but I'm not doing too like literal with it I'm liking these Okay. Every now and then I'm just going to dab with the tip of my brush. Maybe as you get down to the bottom you could do uh, a little bit bigger dots because those branches are getting bigger as they go down to the bottom of the tree. We'll, we'll see more of that when we do this big one. We'll really focus on it, getting it just right. But yeah, liking that. So you get the idea? They're just kind of doing layers, leaving a little bit of dark here and there just to kind of indicate that there's some depth in the tree. And that's all you really need to do. Your, your eye is going to fill in the rest um, just by having the right shape and everything. Uh, yeah, so I think that that's good. I'm liking it. I hope everybody else does. I don't know. Probably like blue trees. She's going to... She's gone off her meds. She's on her meds. <laughs> She's on some serious She's meds. She's on some serious meds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little too much NyQuil. A little too much. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> hey, we're here today, so that's all that matters. That's right. We, you ran out of sick days. I did. <laughs> so you had to come to work anyways. I was almost going to cancel today. I was very close to canceling. Yet the way I felt yesterday, I... I was ready to cancel and just sleep for the rest of the week. But uh, All right, I've got Thalo Blue here, and I've added a little bit of Burnt Sienna. Just that'll kind of make it a little bit more gray, kind of the same thing that I did with the Ultramarine Blue by adding the Burnt Umber. Just kind of grays it down a little bit, and I'm going to add some white to it. That's still pretty bright. Let's add a little bit more Burnt Sienna to that. I'm make it a little bit more of a gray green. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this for this tree and this tree, I think. So we'll do two different two different blues for our back trees and a little bit more. Okay. I think that's good. So I'll do the same thing as I did those other trees. Just gonna kind of rock it back and forth and dab, and we're just going to create these. Excuse me. So, where do you get the plates that have the uh, names of the colors already written on them? <laughs> oh, you just it's make sharpie ho homemade. Homemade. Sharpie. I hope you didn't. Ruin the Sharpie that I used for Stickman. No, I didn't. I used a different one. Okay. I didn't touch your Sharpie. All right. <laughs> I know better. <laughs> I know what you're getting for Christmas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Not to ruin the surprise or anything, but somebody's getting a big old Sharpie in their stocking. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering what we're talking about, Mark drew the Sharpie, the Stickman and Sharpie. On my thankful art video, he was very funny. We did a 
he was our guest artist that day on my chat and talked about perspective and it was very good actually you've been paying attention to my videos i mm -hmm. can tell because mm -hmm. you had all the lingo down yeah I, I forgot to tell people that you know during the ugly Oops. stage oh true i know i forgot yeah, about forgot that. to mention the ugly stage okay somebody's got a real art question here okay asking is hansa yellow medium similar to cad yellow yes yes it's a it's a good substitute they're almost identical hansa yellow is transparent though and Kansas, cadmium is not cadmium is opaque so um if you there's hansa and there's cadmium yellow so you can tell, you can see that they're just just about similar. Um, oh, that's cad yellow light. That's medium. Okay, that's there's the mediums right here. There's the two light colors. There's the medium colors. So cadmium yellow medium is maybe a little bit more on the orangey side, I would say. This is probably more. Hansa yellow is probably more of a true yellow, like right in the middle, um, not too green and not too um, orange. And, but yeah, like I said, this is uh, opaque. I marked mine opaque and transparent. And the hands of yellow is transparent, which means that if you're going to be covering over another color, um, you'll need to add a little bit of white to the hands of yellow to make it uh, cover another color. But, but it also has better tinting strength than the cadmium medium, which means, you know, if you're mixing it with another color, to make uh, you know green or something like that, that hands of yellow is actually going to make a more vibrant color uh, than maybe your cadmium medium would. So I've just switched to it just because there's there's been a lot of talk and controversy about the cadmiums. I mean, honestly, if you're not eating your paints or brushing them on your skin, the cadmiums are not going to you know cause you issues, but um, that goes for any paint, really. I mean, you know, these are non-toxic, but they wouldn't sell it if it was, you know, dangerous. So, not to mention the poor people who are going to mix the paint. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, you know, I don't, but just to avoid any issues, I have, you know, I have both colors, so I've just started using the Hansa hansas instead of the cadmiums whenever i can and same thing with my reds i'm kind of switching to pyro reds instead of the cadmium reds okay so this is going to have a tree in the middle but i'm going to go ahead and just sort of cover all of it all the way down there oops you're supposed to tell me when i'm off camera off camera there hey you're off camera there i, I see that now Actually, I went too far down. I want to stop a little bit higher, so I'm just going to take my rag and wipe that off a little bit. <clears throat> ah, my voice. Oops. Okay, so there's that. And that's a little bit closer to green. It's like blue-green kind of color, maybe. And now we'll add some, let's add some of the unbleached titanium. That'll make it a little bit more of a warmy, warm white. Maybe add a little bit of white to it. And just do the same thing that we did before here. Just going to add a little dabs of the highlight color in my tree. Good. Dollars to it. And if you feel like you need to, I actually might, with this bigger tree, I might just go in with some of the phthalo blue and do some highlight some shadows in with the yellow blue. It's getting it's getting toned down like a little bit by the other colors in my brush, but 
So the blues that you're mix, you're just mixing up the blues, right? Yeah. With the ultramarine mm -hmm. blues and light. This is thalo blue. This tree is thalo yeah. blue and burnt sienna, okay, and white. And then these trees were ultramarine blue and um, burnt umber and white. But yeah, I'm just mixing the blues with a little bit of the browns, kind of like what we did with the background here. Only these ones were, we went all the way gray with these. Now we're staying a little bit more blue than when we made the grays for the background. We went all the way to gray with it. That makes sense. <clears throat> makes sense for me. Good. Because you'll be painting this later, right? Or, oh, there's a test later? <laughs> 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 one of these days we're going to have to get you to paint something with me yeah we that would be fun get a setup where we can get the two cameras split and uh -huh. we could paint along that would be awesome get somebody else to run the, the sound and mm -hmm. monitor chat it, like like I'm really monitoring chat <laughs> I don't <laughs> know if I do too good of a job but <laughs> yeah All right, now I've got the white with it, and I'm just, and these are just little, I don't even know what to call them. They're just like, I'm just barely touching my brush down, using the corner sometimes, and then setting it down and sort of swiping it in other times. So just kind of get a feel for it. Yours are going to look different than mine, so don't try to do yours the exact same way as mine. The thing with Impressionist painting is that you're kind of, expressing your own sort of style so it's not going to look like mine and don't it doesn't it's not supposed to so just kind of let it happen and embrace your own way of doing it and I think I want to put some maybe put a shadow color on this tree now that I think about it because it's like white it's like got a uniform lightness all the way around so maybe put a little shadow color on one side. I just thought of that. I don't want to get too complicated with it, but how much time are we? So we're about an hour. We're doing all right. It's actually not too bad. I think two hours is probably about what we'll have here. Just trying to go slow and kind of explain it as I go. All right, so let's grab some white, and we'll just do a little bit lighter lighter um, color. Let's say our uh, light may be coming from this side. So we'll just do just on this one side of the tree. On some of these lighter areas, we'll put a little bit of brighter highlight. That'll just kind of give it a little bit more of a roundedness feel just by putting the whites on one side. And I'm putting them at the bottom of my highlights so that it looks like maybe this upper part is in shadow, um, like the branch is, this branch that's overlapping it is shadowing this under part here, if that makes sense, so. Good. I wasn't doing the top. Sorry. I keep going off camera. And I'm not watching. Yeah, I can tell. Okay. It's all right. I'm going to do the same thing with this tree. <clears throat> yeah, that's actually probably good. It's adding a little bit of this this blue from this tree into it too, which is not a bad idea. Right? I feel like it's kind of... Right. <clears throat> There we go. All right. So not bad. 
So you can kind of get the idea of that feeling that we're going for with the icy, icy look in our trees. So let's do this tree and then we can put in the rest of our trees. Um, so for this one, I'm going to start out with my number four round and then I'm going to switch to a liner brush. And I did the tree with burnt umber and a little bit of black to darken it up, but I didn't want it straight black. And then I, I added a little bit of ultramarine blue just to kind of keep it in that family that we're working with, with the blues. So it kind of makes this blue gray uh, black color. It's very dark. <clears throat> So that was burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and then we just added black to it. So we made it nice and dark. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to make it easier for my brush to run. And I'm gonna start down here. And really I'm not gonna go all the way down because this tree is gonna cover most of this, but I wanna go down just a little bit farther than I need to just to make sure that if any of it is peeking through my branches of this pine tree that's going to be over the top of it, that it won't look weird. It might be a little bit dark. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of white. I'm going to add the unbleached titanium. Just to kind of gray it out. I don't want it super black. Because it's still in the background, so we don't need it to be like in our face black. Um, <clears throat> we just need it to be dark enough to show up against this background really. But in the in the photographs it's pretty dark. It's a it's a dark bark to tree. Dark bark. So I'm only gonna do the main major branches with this number four round and I'm just going to kind of do these Y shapes where the um, branches branch off from each other, I guess that's the right word, right? And there's one that kind of comes down low. Keep the um, width of the branches with your trees when you're doing them. You want to make sure that they're always wider at the trunk. So they always are going to narrow as they go up and out. Um, so keep that in mind when you're doing it. You don't want to have a thick area up here and then it thin down here. All right, that looks good enough. I'm going to start switching to my smaller brush so that I don't have... Oops. When you're using a liner brush, you always want to add water to it. You can add a medium um, if you're needing to add, you know, a lot of water. It's a little bit harder with heavy body acrylics because they're, they're a lot thicker. So you could add a medium if you were worried about it sticking to your canvas. Like when I say medium, I mean like airbrush medium or something like that. that uh, will give it more of a fluid feeling, but not change the color or anything like that. So using the liner brush here is just going to help us. I really need to avoid doing that. Doing two V's like right next to each other is probably not a great idea because it's going to look unnatural. So try to break that up. if you can and I'm just gonna fill in some of these are gonna kind of come down low there's one there's some of these that kind of come out this way so and if you notice I'm always ending I start at the thickest part of the branch and then I end at the tip. 
because when you lift your brush, it'll be thinnest where you lift. So you're, you're always going to have a thicker line wherever you start your branch. So just keep that in mind when you're painting these. I keep doing these mimicking shapes here. I keep saying I'm not going to, and then I do. Just try to keep it random. Okay. I'm going to make these a little bit. Oops. What did I do there? My brush got away with me. It's all right. I'll just make it look like it crossed over itself. <clears throat> Most of this, we're going to cover up a lot of this with um, some snowy, kind of icy looking stuff, so... If you kind of aren't comfortable with these uh, liner brush, you could totally do all pine trees if you don't want to do this tree here. I don't feel like you have to do the tree if you are not comfortable with the liner brush. If you hold it like a pencil though and kind of keep your hand, um, keep the, I'm gonna, thicken this branch here. Keep the um, your hand going in the direction that you would normally write in. It makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to turn it now when I'm doing these other ones so that I have that this direction to work in. So if you're left-handed, sorry. <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> We're not sorry that you're left-handed. No. No. My dad's left-handed. Yeah. I could have been left-handed. We have nothing against left-handed people. No. Nope. I'm just saying this might be harder. Right. Can you paint left-handed to show them how it would be done? I, do, I Oh, my gosh. I don't even know. How would you do it? You'd probably do it like that, right? <laughs> I don't even... Don't... Don't know. Too much for your brain to process. Yes. Too much. Okay, we have a question yep. asking that uh, what kind of techniques would you use to make your painting look like it's from the perspective of looking through a window? And I'm guessing giving it, you know, some sort of a glass look. Um, gosh, I don't know. I have to see a picture, really, of what you're talking about, but I mean, um, the glass will distort your picture a little bit and it'll probably mute your colors some. Um, so would you put some sort of a glaze over it at could, the end and yeah. make it go uh, opaque-ish or foggy looking or yeah, whatever? Yeah, you could, especially yeah, if you're doing like icy window or something like that. Um, and you know you're you're gonna have have reflections in it and things like that that um, that you'll want to pay attention to too. So, but really, without a f photograph, I mean, I don't have a like a a set way of doing it. I do like tend to put reflection lines in. You know that helps with that. Um, you know depends on how realistic you want to be with it, I guess. You know, if you're going for real realism, I would definitely use a photograph. If you don't really care and you're just kind of doing like a, you know, a truck window that's a cartoony kind of thing, just doing some like diagonal little lines in the glass, you know, and with a light, like light white, like or a um, gray or something, even blue, that's like transparent. Um, so maybe you can see through it some, but, you know, just like a light wash of some diagonal lines well, I, will kind of help create that glassy feel. Yeah, I, I think what they were looking for, and I didn't make it clear there at the beginning, 
um, that if they're like looking out a window into a landscape, uh-huh. you know, so the whole whole painting or picture would have that that glazed look or mm-hmm. whatever. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, that's. I would do the background. I would do your painting just like you would normally do a painting, and then at the end, after you're finished, I would probably wash a little bit of a transparent, like maybe a zinc white or something like that, maybe mixed with the color um, to gray it out so that it's not so stark white. But that's probably what I would recommend doing. Um, that it, you know, give it uh, just just in a couple of places just to kind of make it look a little bit like it's uh, see-through, you know, that there's glass there, if that makes sense. I don't know. But like I said, if you're doing it, if you're doing realism, I would just do, get it, get yourself a really good picture and, um, you know, look really carefully at the colors and if there's any reflections, what those look like and where they're at and that kind of thing. Paint what you see. That's, you know, that's always a good rule of thumb. So, okay, that's looking all right. <clears throat> I feel like this tree is kind of needs some help here. He's kind of doing some weird things. All right, so we're almost done with this one. Most of this is going to be covered up by the steeple, but I still want to put those branches in so that they... Um, you know, look like they're there. Go pretty high with them too. I think that that's pretty good. There's a lot of little branches in the picture that I'm looking at, so you can really fill in this whole area with all these crisscrossing branches if you want to. Um, really adds to that look of being all jumbled up. Okay. And then now I'm going to add some white. Just clean up my brush so I don't get gray. Add some white and I might add just a tiny bit of the blue. This light blue permanent and we're just going to go along and put some snow on these branches just above all of the branches so and some of them like where there's a V there might be a little bit more snow caught in there and it'll only be the ones that are pointing upward so you're not you know you're not going to put it on the back side of this one here you're gonna always um, if your br branch is going straight up you might not have any snow on it um, so and some of the smaller the smaller um, branches don't worry about right now and I'm gonna bring this one like over the top so that it looks like that one's behind it okay. <clears throat> Uh, there's a lot of little details in this painting, but I think we'll make a difference. Even if they're going kind of almost straight up, you can still kind of fit a little bit of it in there. Some of them, like right here where it's kind of shifted, that snow might be whoop, caught on the bark or something. doing, hun? 
I'm doing great. Good. How are you doing? No, hanging in there. Good. My voice is holding up okay. Yes, yeah, doing well. <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of some of these chalk lines so I can see what I'm doing here. I feel like they're kind of in the way there. Okay. Just wiping them off with a damp rag. There we go. So now we can see the tree and our little snow. It's getting caught on these little limbs here. And we'll put that one on top. So it's kind of covering the rest of those. All right, I'm going to take the, actually get some of that gray, maybe pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue and my black or that color that was our tree trunk color and just kind of rub over the top of the tree, tree a little bit just very dry brush kind of set back the bark a little bit in some places to give it some texture Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. So let's grab the, we'll go ahead and use the fan brush on this. I'm going to grab some of that white, a tiny bit of the blue, light blue permanent, just to kind of soften it up a little bit. And I'm keeping this, dry, this brush dry, and I'm going to just tap in just some little snowy, like there might be some leaves or something still stuck on these trees here. Just a little bit. And I don't want to overdo it too much. But kind of go over the top and above some of those, where those branches end. To kind of tap some snow. This caught on some stuff there. Maybe this is the first snow of the fall, so it's still had a few leaves on the tree. I don't know. But all the all the pictures that I had, this tree must, I don't know what kind of tree it is, but all the pictures that I had had a little bit of something going on in the tree. So there was some leaves or something there. Okay, and I think that that might do a few that are kind of right in the middle, like there might be some stuff coming up straight at us. I'm turning my brush a little bit. In different directions so that it's not all facing the same way. Okay. Alright, I think that's good. So you can see kind of now why we did that dark background back there. It's really uh, giving it a little bit of contrast enough. I think so. I'm liking that. All right, so let's leave that. And we'll start doing our foreground stuff. So let's go ahead and put in our chapel, and then we'll do the trees over the top and do all of our shading in the foreground. So I'm going to get out my ruler here. And I'm just going to make sure that I have a good vertical line. I'm using a watercolor pencil. And I'm just going to get it good. Whoops, I'm going down farther than I need to. <clears throat> watercolor, using a watercolor pencil will help be able to erase. Would you be able to clean out my water, honey? I just want to be sure I don't have 
dirty water when I'm doing my clean white snow. This will give us the center line for our spire. And this, this picture is looking straight on to the chapel. So let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. So let's see. This is about almost three inches. Let's see. Um, three and a quarter, just about on this. So I just want to make sure that it's equal distance away. So I'm going to do right here and right here. I just want to make sure that these two side pieces are equal. I'm going to go straight up with those. And really, um, if you want to make this easy on yourself, what you could do, I'm just lining up the bottom here with my the edge so that I get a straight edge. Um, what you could do is tape this off so that you get, you know, exact lines if you're not comfortable with um, painting them in. Okay, so thank you, honey. Um, let's see. I want to go down to about right here with it. So I'm going to use this there. So that's going to come all the way down to there. But our house is going to set up in here. That's going to be the door. This is kind of the foundation down here. And our door is going to set up a little higher. Right up in here somewhere. I think that's about right. I'm just trying to make sure that I get it even. So let's get... I don't usually do this, but I think with this one it, it'll help. So this is two inches here. And here. Two inches. And then we'll slope it down on either side. If you start at the same point here and go to the same length there, you'll get them equal, an equal angle. Looks about right. All right, now this part here is going to angle um, up. It's not as wide as the doors, so the doors are going to be right in here somewhere. Let me see. The Okay, the windows are just below the pitch of this roof here. So right here are going to be our two windows. Here and here. And just try to get them about the equal distance apart and stop about the same. And then the... Doors are in here somewhere. And then the and here this pitch is going to be the same as the roof pitch, so just make sure that you get this angle and this angle exactly the same. There and there. And they come down lower than the windows. So and I don't really have this measured, but That's about where we want to be. And then the, need to make sure that this and this are about the same height. I feel like that one's a little higher than the other. I guess that's about right. Okay, that one's higher than that one. That's what it was. Okay. So this is about a little bit wider than the door here. And it doesn't come up very high, so stop it just above the peak there. Do a straight line across. Then this kind of comes straight up here. 
and then you have another straight line across and this is split into two parts so this is this bottom parts a little bit smaller than this top part I'm trying to make sure that these sides are equal distance apart here and then the top of the roof comes out a little bit and angles in and up to a nice point like that okay I don't know if they can see that can they see that okay through there Is that all right yeah yeah okay. I can see it all right and then there's uh, there's kind of a side building right here but um, we're just gonna dry it dark we're gonna just paint it in kind of dark right there but there's like uh, more buildings back here but this tree kind of covers up in front of it so that's all we need to do for the chapel and let's go ahead and get painting I'm going to use a little bit narrower brush this is a quarter inch flat and I'm going to do the main part of the chapel it's kind of a reddish brown so I mean I guess you could have probably used red iron oxide if I thought about it that probably would have been a good choice um, I'm just adding burnt um, burnt sienna to my pyro red pyro crimson. That's why I said you really could use any red because it doesn't really matter. This is just kind of a red chapel, a little bit on the orangey side. So, um, whatever color you choose is going to be fine. But I like the crimson because what I'm going to do is use the crimson with my blue to create some like purple shadows so using a crimson which is like a little bit more on the purple side of the scale is going to help me achieve that a little bit easier than using a orangey red if that makes sense i'm just going to kind of paint around my things actually I'm going to leave the windows blank because those will be blue. What time is it? Okay, 3.30. So we're an hour and a half. I don't know. We'll see. This may be a little bit longer than two hours. Probably is at this point. I'm trying to go fast, but... This is just a complicated, you know, a little bit more complicated. Well, yeah, you know, you're just doing the layers and you got to wait for the paints to dry. Mm -hmm. and, and we did have a question earlier in the chat and one of the moderators did answer, but people listening and in the future didn't see the question. So um, why didn't you paint the church first? Oh, because this background would have been so hard to try to get. It's so random. It's really not one that I could have painted around something else because it was so, um, you know, using the brush the way that I was and getting that textured feeling, it just wouldn't have, wouldn't have worked. I mean, I guess you could have taped it off and then, you know, painted it. But, but it's kind of easier to work from the background to the foreground. Yeah. And, and I noticed that you painted the tree like completely and then you're gonna you'll paint over portions of right. it with with the church you know? right okay yeah because i mean acrylics are you know are very easy to cover um so you don't really unless you're using you know cheaper uh craft acrylics or something like that you don't really have to worry about um your layers showing through you know or the under layers showing through unless you're deliberately making it you know happen that way so you can easily you know you with acrylics you generally the rule is working dark to light um, and I I just prefer working this way I feel like it's a little bit less um, I mean like every now and then like when I'm doing the windows here you know every now and then I'll go around stuff but for the most part, I feel like it's just a lot, it goes a lot faster if you just do your painting in layers and do your whole background and then do your stuff on top, on top, on top. Just makes your painting go faster. 
So that's just a personal choice, but you could do it either way, really. But I don't think, I don't know that you could get this background, you know, this texture right up against the 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 red if you tried to go around it. I just don't think that you could really achieve that look. So it'd be a lot harder at least. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of this roof detail so that I kind of know where that goes, but it doesn't really matter. I can put it back in later. <clears throat> and leave it in my... Okay, so I'm kind of going dark and I'll probably put some lighter highlights on top. I'm looking at my windows. This one looks like it's a little closer to the edge than this one does. It's about a brush width apart. I'll make this one a little bit. I probably should have measured those. Well. Okay. And then. Okay, so that's the only red there. And let's go ahead and clean that out. And I'm dirtying up your nice water with red now, honey. I should have waited, I this guess. is why we don't have nice things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So true. All right, so for the trim, I'm using hand, um, yellow oxide, and I'm adding a little bit of the red to it to make a little bit more orangey. Just a little bit of this pyrrole. Kind of change the tone just a little bit. And I think I'll just go ahead and use this brush, and we'll see how it does. So and you've been using the quarter-inch flat yeah, for oops, all this, for the I church? Yeah, what I did there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking. You asked me a question. I got distracted. What? You've been using the quarter inch flat. Yes. Doing the church. Yes. Okay. Now you could switch to a liner brush if, or a um, round brush. Come down below the the corner there a little bit. Let me zoom in. I just need some zoom in. I add a little bit of the white. I feel like it's kind of a little dark. There we go. Well, I keep going over the top of that. I don't want to do that. All right, so This is just my first coat. I'm probably going to need a couple coats to cover over all these grays and things that are underneath here. Because yellows, especially, even though this yellow oxide is opaque, it's it's still a pretty light color. So it won't necessarily cover over very well. <clears throat> Let's do the doors. And if I hold my brush up on its end, I can get a line with it. So if you press your brush brush flat, um, press it flat here, and then you can get a good line with it. The sides have some detail trim, so you'll do the outside edges right here and here. And then below, all the way across. And then I think I'm going to use some of this mixed with the red here. And just kind of run some streaks, dry brush, some streaks into this siding. It's kind of a, 
it's got lines in it in the pictures. So I'm going to kind of use my brush to sort of texture the front of this church here a little bit. Make sure your red is dry before you do this. You don't want to lift off the color. Just give it a little bit of dimension and then I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to the red and go up here underneath the eaves and just darken up that that line there. It's picking up my gold color. <clears throat> People hanging in there? Oh yeah. Is it going too long? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Okay, good. We've got 171 wow, watching. Great. You get 206 likes, so people are really interested in this painting here today. Very good. This was a, I mean, immediately, as soon as I saw this picture, I was like, yes. Because I'd been looking for a snowy, a snowy chapel kind of painting, but, or, you know, <coughs> excuse me, reference photo. But I couldn't find one that was just exactly what I wanted. And then I saw this and I was like, this is, it is perfect. I'm going to use this very, very thin to draw just a tiny little separation in my door. <clears throat> Excuse me, goodness. Try not to cough on my mic. Yeah, no, I'm all right. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to switch to my liner brush just so I can get in some of these details for the windows and things. And the up around the... I mean, there's honestly not a lot of detail in here. I mean, you can do a little bit more if you want to. I might do just a little bit with the liner brush. I'm just kind of try to get some vertical lines going. Just a few little... It's kind of a pretty evenly spaced I don't want to be too dark with it because we'll have these other things going on, but at least that'll give us a little bit of darkness there. Okay, so the pitch of the roof is the same as this. I want to make sure I match it up. Come down. Whoops. And it's fairly thin. I mean, the whole, all the siding, this is a little bit thicker than what I'm doing here, so I might do it a little bit double, double thick, but there's going to be snow on top of it, so uh, keep that in mind. If you don't get it exactly right, you can just kind of fix it with the snow because it'll be like dabbed on there, so. All right, I think that that's a about right. Then the two lines on either side of the door are going to come in like this. Whoops, keep them straight. There. Make sure they're about the same distance. About right there. Need to come down a little bit more on this side. Okay. Cute. My doors look a little crooked, but that's all right. They don't have to be perfect. You can straighten them out if you need to. That's good, and then I'm going to use, let me grab my little spotter here. I'm going to use, actually, the Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue in my windows here. Makes a little bit of burnt umber in it to make it dark. 
And we'll just fill those in. Nice and dark. A little bit of blue. do commentary for me here yes Angela is currently using a spotter brush <laughs> with some paint on it <laughs> making paint strokes yes doing windows right how's that that's good I, it's about, about what I would have said <laughs> Okay, I'm feeling like this one needs to come in this way a little bit. Just trying to get these about the same size. Okay, since these are supposed to be symmetrical. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this with the yellow oxide to do the windows too. A little tiny bit of red. Outline them. I can hear you laughing over there. Oh, people! You know the commentary just caught up, so they're <laughs> they're in, they're enjoying the the awesomeness of it of your commentary. Yes, I do enjoy. As she fills a space with ultramarine blue. Right. No, it wasn't ultramarine. It was oh, thalo blue. Sorry, thalo blue. And now it's some kind of a yellowish color around the edges of the windows. <laughs> I added white to my yellow oxide. One would do that in this situation, yes. <laughs> it's mixing a little bit with my blue. I probably need to wait for it to dry completely because it's wanting to mix with the blue. So let's work up here and we'll come back to that. I'm going to add the yellow too up here because it's going to take a while for it to, it might take a couple coats to cover. So I'm going to fill in this area with my yellow oxide red white mixture. Same color we've been doing for the siding. Just do like a square up here pretty much. that in and then I'm going to use this color to go over the top of my roof again you don't have to cover over solidly if you kind of let some of that under color show through it'll look a little bit shaded in some areas so I'm just kind of brushing it over lightly and do the same thing right here this is just this is just like one shade lighter than than the original color that I used because I added a little bit of white to it. So it's looking good. I feel like this peak is off a little bit, but that's all right. Do a little bit on these sides, and actually, kind of doing this sort of well, it's a little bit messy there. Um, doing this a little bit rough um, when I say that I mean like kind of the way I'm brushing across the canvas here and letting the texture kind of catch um, gives a little bit of that painterly feeling to you know sort of like what we did on the tree bark here we don't want the cabin or the the church to look completely perfect when the rest of this is all kind of impressionist so you know, give it a little bit of uh, more of that impressionist feel too by the way you're dabbing in these brush strokes. You don't have to be completely perfect about it. You know, you want to get it close, but 
It doesn't have to be fully in the lines, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Hopefully, hopefully I'm making sense today. I'm going to add a little bit of the highlight color in the front of my doors here. Leaving a little bit of dark around the edges. I'm just going to do it in the middle, sort of like that. All right, it's coming along. It's looking good. The porch has a light right here, so there's like, let's grab that light yellow color and just dab a little bit of a light right here. <clears throat> I feel like this has gotten a little bit, that looks all right. All right, now up here, I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. And there's these little vents in this, so I'm gonna do a dark line under here. I hope it's dry enough, it might not be dry yet. Um, and then a little bit below halfway, so if this is halfway, I'm gonna come just underneath that and do another line right here. And then gonna, let's grab a burnt sienna too. And then there's these little vent things here and here, little square little lines that come across a little bit. And then there's like a, I'm gonna grab the yellow oxide here. There is a cap sort of sitting on top there that goes all the way across. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Clean that out. And then the, this is phthalo blue with burnt sienna again. It's like that kind of blue green color. Dark at first, and we're going to fill in our. We'll fill it in nice and dark, and then we'll add some highlights to it to brighten it up. I might add just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of white to give it some color so it doesn't look black. But I wanted to keep it fairly dark. So we're still on the blue side, so don't add too much of the burnt sienna. We're just adding enough of it to make it a little bit more green or a little bit more gray or something. This is the similar color to what we did over here on this tree. So Don't worry too much if you go over the top of your roof because we're going to put snow up here. So it's going to be messed up anyways. this is even. I feel like this is going to lean into one side even though I measured it. I think it's the tree that's making it look like that because the tree's leaning. Hopefully once we get this on here it'll make sense. maybe a little bit taller than it should be. Let me take that down just a little bit. Like it's not quite that tall. I just use water and wipe that off. Since it was wet, it'll come right off there. 
my background's dry, so it's not going to lift off my background. Just don't rub too hard because your paint's not cured yet. There, that's better, I think. See, I'm gonna hold it up and look at it. It looks about right, I think. I think that there's some sort of a cap or something at the top there, because I'm seeing in my picture there's like snow sort of stuck on top. So I'm gonna grab some of this yellow, just do a little bit of a cross up there, or like a little all something right there. I don't know. I can't even see that. All right. <clears throat> Let me use a little bit of this color. Just really fine on the tip of my brush. I'm going to use it in these vents. Don't feel like they're dark enough. There we go. What you asking about? Fun. Okay, so the question came asking, which is darker, Mars black or carbon black? Carbon black is shinier. They're about the same. I think. I think carbon black is. Um, there's carbon and there's Mars, so I think the carbon is a little bit darker myself. There's ivory. Ivory is more of a brownish, and then, and carbon has got shine to it. My, Mars is matte, so. Well, I should have just asked you in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> Sneaking around behind you, trying to look at the paints. I know. I was like, "What are you doing back there?" <laughs> mm. Okay, I'm trying to remember what color I or what kind of brush I used. I think I. Let me grab just a small flat like this. Oh, I probably used my number four round. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, all right, so I want to do my snow detail now on here. I think I've got, well, let's go ahead and put the, the um, ground in. Let's grab some brown. And we'll do the basement section here with this burnt sienna or burnt umber with a little bit of the red mixed in and I'm not worried too much about it because it's going to be covered by snow so I just want to make sure it's kind of even right here on the end but most of that's going to be covered up by that tree over here oh you know what Oh, I'm going to have to, I just realized that the tree was put in first before I did the chapel on this side. I will. I'll just tape it. I thought it was in front, but it's not. Not on that side. Dock me ten points there for that. Or you could leave it out. It doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to put a little shadow along the side here with this brown, too, on either side of this. Just kind of rubbing dry brush slightly there and a little bit in the eaves just to give it a little shadow up in there. I'm going to do it one more time up here, too, because it was getting mixed with that yellow when I did it the first time. This is just burnt umber. very dry. And my brush is very dry. I'm just going to lightly, and I'm going to put a little bit here and here over these vents. All right, I feel like, let's grab some of that yellow oxide. Let me touch that up. I feel like that's getting weird looking right there. 
grab some of the light highlight highlighted color and just add a little bit of that in that area like we did down here. We are almost done with this chapel. Can you zoom out? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even show the bottom, did I? When I did the bottom, I was so zoomed in. Oh, I, it probably didn't show at all. That's probably what people are talking about. <laughs> Honey, you're supposed to help me with that. I was all fixated on Mars and carbon <sighs> black, and I completely missed that. So go ahead okay. and uh, erase all that and redo it. Okay, this is burnt umber down here. Sorry. Jeez, I didn't realize I was still zoomed in. Okay, so I need a monitor for Christmas. You need, yes, you do. So I can watch it from over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm doing this dark shadow back here where this other building is. Oh, what's that? <laughs> Something got on there. Okay, so we're almost done with the chapel here. I think I'm going to we'll do the little wreath is phthalo blue and yellow oxide. So make it green or yeah, that's right. And I just did them oh, kind of high up. Just did a little dab of circle on each door. About the same size. Using this spotter so that it stays pretty. Random, fluffy. And then there is a doorknob right here. Just going to handle right there. Okay. The windows get a little bit of, we'll do white and a little bit of this light blue permanent. Get a line right down the middle. Very, very light. So just keep barely touching your brush down. Keep it very small. And turn it. And I'll do one right in the middle. And two more. On either side, try to kind of get them about the same size. There we go. <clears throat> and I'm not going all the way to the edge, so that way they'll have a natural shadow. If I leave a little bit of a space between here and where the line starts, I don't have to go back in and shadow it. Okay. Now for the roof, I'm going to grab, this is the, where is this? This is the roof uh, blue, right? So I'm going to add a little bit of white to it, well, a lot of white to it. Make this color that was kind of similar to that. and brush off most of the paint so I just have a little tiny bit of this on my brush here and I'm going to start at the bottom here and just do some roof tiles by setting it down and lifting lightly and I'm just going to do rows thank you do rows of trying to keep them about the same width when I get up here, I'm just going to have to use the tip of my brush or the corner. There we go. And then the outside edges kind of have 
some color, some outline. So I'm just going to kind of brush it along the outside. Do the same thing up here. Pretty much only going to get one row right there and then sort of like that. Outline it here and here a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to put in our snow. So I'm going to clean that out. And actually, let me wait because I want to put in these trees and then we'll we'll put in the snow at the end when I do the stairs and everything. So we're at two hours here. Sorry, hon. Whoops. Okay, so what are we doing? We're doing a green greenish tree. We're gonna go with this color, this darker green here. Blue, yellow blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna. So, this one was more of the blue. These ones are going to be more on the green side. We can even add, let's add a little yellow oxide to it to make it even more green. So, we'll get a green tree after all. So, I'm just going to do this. It's a blue green, it's pretty. Um, kind of fluffy edges. What blue was that? It's uh, thalo blue with burnt sienna and just a little bit of yellow oxide. Okay. So I'm leaving a little bit of the background color showing through. We'll probably fill in some of those spots with the, with the, uh, oh, I'm still going off camera here. Let me zoom out. Sorry guys. Burnt sienna, thalo blue, just a little bit of blue goes a long way. Just doing this kind of cone shape thing. And this is gonna go over the top of this gray here. We're gonna come down below our tree here, so And the front of it is kind of a little bit rounded. <clears throat> All right. Good. Another one over there. The yellow blue. Yellow oxide. And this one is going to come right here. The trunk is going to be right in the middle right here. So it's going to end right about where that tree ended. I'm going to go right up next to the house and over the top of this and up to about right here. So this is the center of it. I lost my chalk lines. I'm just going to overlap this tree a little bit to push it in the background. So. <clears throat> Add a little bit of burnt sienna to it to darken it up. Mm -hmm. I need to make it nice and dark because it's covering over these dark branches here. I might add a little bit of burnt umber to it just to darken it up. And then I'm going to grab that black and mix that in with it and do the trunk. The trunk is just kind of peeking out on this one, so I need to come straight down from there. There's a little trunk underneath there. Same thing for this one. There's a little trunk showing on this one. 
and this one as well, right there. Okay, we'll make these kind of set in, we'll put in some shadows now so that these trees kind of are settled. So I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to my pyrrole crimson and make this kind of a violet purple. Grab some white. It's a pretty color. And we may need it a little bit darker. We'll see. We're going to add some of that underneath our tree here. Probably could have done this first, but oh well. We'll add some more colors here in a minute. I'm <clears throat> just setting my brush down and kind of dragging it side to side. Sort of like what we did up here. Well, it's going to create <clears throat> this kind of skipping texture. Um, we'll add other colors to this. So don't freak out if you're like, that's purple. Um, you know, this is just one of the colors that's going to be in this kind of under layer back here. Purple is a good shadow color though. So it's going to look good back here. I just want it underneath these trees. Some of it is picking up the darker part of my brush because I'm just kind of scrubbing it. All right, that's good. I could even go in and use a little bit of this in these trees back here if I wanted to. Maybe just add a little bit of it in there to sort of unify the painting a little bit. Kind of helps when you introduce a new color. All right, so let's use some of that, that blue here, this light ultramarine blue. And we'll add some of that on top too. See how that's going to set it back to? It'll work with that purple and create this really lovely color thing going on. We'll add some white over the top of all this, but this is just going to be our kind of initial layer. And I'm going to add some more of the phthalo blue, this color, down in this foreground, but this is going to be sort of our shadowy these purpley blues. Okay. I might add a little bit of black and just do a tiny bit of gray back there. I'm just adding it to that purple color there. Get some darker values going in there just right up underneath that tree we're going to do another tree right here on top so most of this is going to be covered up but a little bit of it will peek through just kind of a purpley gray doing okay huh? everybody's doing great somebody had asked a question about when they're washing their brushes their the, their uh, hands you know the skin cracking a little bit so oh all kinds of advice in the I chat I have a good um, this stuff working hands work so good yep that was one of the suggestions in the chat that's the ones that I use because yeah. I have the same problem and I get eczema usually on this hand in the winter time and I have not had it since I started using that I didn't have it at all last year when I used it I'm going to use this a little bit on the wreath a little bit of this dark dark 
So uh, working mm-hmm. hands, if you need mm-hmm. a sponsor, you just go ahead yeah, and contact I'm, us. I'm a fan. Yep. I am a fan. I'm sold on it. My girlfriend who does, um, she does dyeing. She makes scarves. She's the one that told me about it. Uh, Nancy Heckler, she, um, she's got her hands in water a lot and doing the dyeing and things. And, uh, yeah, it works like a charm. All right, one more tree to do here and then another one right here. And then we'll get a little bit of snow highlights and finish up our snow here and we'll be done. Getting really close. So let's do another one of these greenish ones over there. So I got my phthalo blue and I'll just use that here. It, it was already mixed up there a little bit, so it's got that burnt sienna mixture. It's kind of almost turquoise actually. Let's use some of this hands of yellow. I haven't used any of it yet. Ooh, look how bright that is. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I need burnt sienna to the rescue. Tone that down. Yeah, so I guess you don't need the hands of yellow because I didn't use it anywhere. <laughs> I thought I used it on the other. Well, I think I used it on, on the, the green for the thing there, but that's about it. So, yeah, you really don't need the yellow. Yellow oxide is all you need on this one dark green and I think I had sap green as one of my colors but I never I decided to mix my greens instead so you don't need sap green either but you could use sap green instead of this color if you wanted to so if you were to invest into uh you know, three, four, five really good paints because I know, you know, the tubes of like the golden paints can be upwards right. of ten, twenty dollars a piece. Yeah. Uh what are some like the main ones that you would go for? For the real expensive paints? Yeah, you know, just a good quality one that you could then use to help mix and get with any other of the colors. other colors. Yeah. Yeah, Thalo Blue for sure because it's it's really vibrant in the in the um professional colors so and you can mix it with red to get something similar to ultramarine so um thalo blue white for sure you you always want to go with good a good white i mean really white would be my first choice you know um because the better quality whites will cover better um so white and then a good red that's probably like a middle of the road red, like a cad red medium or pyrrole red. Um, let me think. Yeah, pyrrole red, this red here. It's a little on the orangey side. Um, it's kind of right down the middle, almost like a cherry red. And then, um, and then a really good yellow, like hands of yellow. Um, and then a, either burnt sienna or burnt umber because you kind of need those to mix some of these other, you know, earthy tones. And yellow oxide's a good color to use too. Yellow oxide's a very, uh, I don't know. That'd be hard if I had to choose to do only, you know, certain colors. That would be difficult but I mean there's painters that do that and they limit their palettes and they do all their paintings in the same you know color schemes so and that's totally uh doable okay I think I'm going to do this one with like a little bit of a this purpley color that I made make a purple tree just to blow everybody's minds just because we can Question asking um, if using the cadmium hues mix the same as the just standard cad. So say that again. If, cadmium hues. Yeah. Um, cadmium hues don't mix the same. I mean, they're you know they're a student grade. Um, they'll you'll get a similar color, but they're they're not as uh, saturated. 
I'm trying to think if I have a, a hue here. I don't think I do to show the difference. But um, so when you're mixing them, they won't, you know, you might need a little bit more or uh, of the hue color than you would um, a uh, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. yeah makes sense to me. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to put one here, a little baby one, right in here, maybe a little offset. I feel like the other one was a little closer. This one in mine here, it kind of got covered over, but I had more room to work with, I guess. So this little baby one here, we're going to put in actually just leave it out if we wanted to, but I think we'll do it a little off-center here. <clears throat> Come down a little bit farther. And keep it small. This is uh, ultramarine blue mostly with a little bit of red. And I think I grabbed a little bit of the burnt sienna, too. Pretty. Let's use a little bit of this color. I'm going to wet it down a little bit. And use a little bit of it in our under our trees, too. <clears throat> okay. I don't know. I like the different color trees. That is just me. I'm kind of on a weird bender today, so sorry. I blame the drugs. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's interesting to see the different colors and, you know, yeah. people want to keep them all more natural colors. They yeah, can do that. totally do that. And, really, um, all you need to do is just do some contrast between the, you know, two trees. Mm -hmm. So maybe do this one a little bit lighter color than this one or something like that, but you could totally do them in normal colors if you wanted to. I get that. All right, I'm going to do the little bit lighter. I just added a little bit of white to this base color here. And I'm just going to add this. And I'll go back in and add some white to it like I did with the other trees. These are very stylized. They're not super realistic, so. I don't know. I like them. <clears throat> I spritz my palette here. My white's getting a little bit dry. Can Angela G says she loves your trees. Good. Thank Actually, you. Actually, everybody's saying that she's loving the, they're loving the trees. Good. So. Good. We get to make up our own colors. This is our, our what a Bob, Bob Ross would say, right? This is our world. We're gonna <laughs> paint it happy. I can't remember what he said. He used to say, "Maybe we've got a tree over here. Let's just give him a friend." <laughs> that reminds me. Actually, that reminds me of a meme that I saw. It was like, <laughs> I can't, I won't say it. I can't say it. <laughs> it was, it was about that quote, but it was, it was like, he's, here's a happy tree over here. He's got friends. And then there's, there's Bob over here. He's a real jerk or something like that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It said it was more, it was more colorful than that, but it was pretty funny. Okay. I'm getting slap happy now. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Pretty soon we're going to have the whole painting filled up with trees here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just keep painting trees. Yep. They're having a party. They just kept inviting their friends and got a little out of hand. Okay, I'm using this pink color now to kind of just throw that in there. I'm going to start. Then when I do these trees, I'll do the same thing. I'll just start kind of adding some of this color in our foreground on top of our shadowed areas, giving it some highlight. 
I'm gonna use up what I've got left on my brush here. And I feel like I want some of this color in my tree up here. I'm just going to dab a little bit of the pink up here. I feel like it needs it. Just brighten it up a little bit. Can you see what I'm doing? You can't. Sorry. Are you zoomed in again? No. Well, I'm zoomed in partially. Okay. Oh, what I got on there. I wanted it close enough so you could see what I was doing with the trees. But okay, yeah, that looks good. They kind of just warmed up that tree a little bit. You can barely see it, but it's got just a tiny touch of that pink in there now. Um, I think it helped kind of unify it. I don't know. I like it. So let's. So yeah, just kind of review with everybody what you just did off off camera there <laughs> mm, all i did was add a little bit of this this color this pink okay up here in the tree I just, just up in the trees here and there. okay mm -hmm. just dabbed a little bit of it on um okay so let's do these trees so this was that blue green i'm just going to add white to it to get a kind of a highlight color going And we'll I feel like that's too light. Grab some of that darker. There we go. Use both colors. And I want to leave some dark areas, so I'm going to leave leave a little bit of dark right there. Zigzag it up and down with these highlights. So I've got some par pockets of dark happening. And they kind of fall in layers, so you'll have like a layer here and a layer here, but it won't be straight across. It's going to kind of have some up and down. So, yeah, that's looking good. You notice I'm kind of turning so these ones are kind of going in this way. These ones are straight up and down. And these ones are angled this way. So that'll kind of help to give you some direction to your branches. That's looking good. Uh, I feel like I need some more of that base color. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more of that. Thalo blue. There we go. And I'm going to put some of that in. Ooh, that's a pretty color. That's even brighter, turquoise. I'm going to put some of that in here and there. <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll go back in with our white. Like that. Okay. adding layers with white and taking a little bit more time with these ones in the front just because they're going to be you know sort of our focal point trees they're darker I'm 
make sure you go all the way down below the branch here make kind of a arc at the bottom oh I just put my sleeve in it I think this whole area over here got all messed up yep I sure did oh sorry 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 all right that's good we'll do I feel like this tree needs to be down farther it does this tree comes down farther let's bring him down right here some of that darker green. I'll clean up my brush. Not going dark enough with me. <clears throat> Almost done here. Keep saying that. It's two and a half hours. <laughs> no. Almost done. One more layer. Burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow oxide. There's that dark, dark green. There we go. I'll, I'll add some more white on top of this, but I just needed it. Okay. Yeah. And then there's the center of that one. I lost the trunk. This one's got his trunk showing a little bit too. <clears throat> okay, now the white on this tree. And I'm kind of just setting my brush down on an angle. So if you notice, it's not square this way. It's kind of set down so that it, it's creating these kind of naturally rounded edges by setting it down on its corner. Are you laughing at something over there? Yes, people are uh, talking about uh, buying stuff art supplies and so forth and I believe one of our moderators was uh, put on timeout because they try to use Dick Blick <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome that so now it's the store that cannot be named is hilarious yes yes yeah I had to we had a really bad troll last couple weeks ago so we had to add all kinds of words that yeah. yeah, so all the anatomy got mm -hmm. named <laughs> in our blocked words. So didn't think about that. Sorry, Dick Blick. Need to change your name. They're actually going to Blick now. They're calling themselves Blick Art Supplies now. I think they decided that wasn't probably a good strategy. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. You think? <laughs> There's some of us in the world that aren't mature. Aren't mature. That's aren't right. that mature. Yeah, I know. And aren't mature enough to handle a name like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dick Blick carrying Hooker's Green. Just That's bad. Yes. Don't even start. <laughs> Don't even go there. So are we done with this show yet? Okay, I'm going to do what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, I'm cutting you off now. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add white to this one side of it here. You're a mess. You're on meds too. Mark's just as sick as I am. <clears throat> All right. I feel like these could be wider, but oh well. 
you can add, add more white if you feel like you need to. I'm going to add snow at the end too, so don't let me forget that, honey. Just sprinkle it with snow. You're not listening. Uh, of course I'm paying attention, honey. <laughs> Yes. What did I just ask you to do? I have no idea. <laughs> Remind me to snow. Put snow on here. Remind you to put snow. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Keep burping. On your winter scene. Yes. Well, I didn't do it on my example, so oh, okay. I thought about it and that later, but I didn't do it. So I want to splatter it with snow. Yeah. Oh, see, now you just gave it away. Somebody asked earlier if you are going to splatter it and... Yes. I said you're just going to have to wait to the end and see. It was a cliffhanger. Sorry. Well, see, now. I gave away your. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now they don't just stay tuned in for the whole thing. It's true. They That's know the, the best part, though. All right. These are looking all right, I think. I don't know. I like the weird colors. Right. Adding white. Mostly just this one side, kind of toward the middle a little bit. I could even get fancy and go in with some... For Actually, I think I will. I will. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to grab some of this light ultramarine blue that was in these trees in the foreground and add some onto the shadowy side as highlights on the shadow side. Oop, that's pretty. I like it. Good call. Like when a plan works out, you never know. Sometimes, sometimes you just kind of have to experiment, and figure it out as you go along. This, you know, this kind of I don't do a lot of snow painting, so this has been kind of a fun challenge for me to kind of, you know, figure out what colors I want to use and what my work. But yeah, I like it. Yeah, and I definitely think that that helps. Kind of needed that tie-in to these back trees here to use this light ultramarine blue on these trees on this shadow side make it make sense visually and oh boy this is the fun part you ready for this honey all right get the kids <laughs> hide the dog <laughs> it's gonna get messy in here <laughs> all right well first we get to do the snow oh, on the not chapel yet. Well, we're almost there. Oh, we're almost oh, there. Oh, I thought almost. it was splatter time. Well, no, not quite. We're we're just doing our bright snow now. We're going in for the real oh. bright stuff. Doing the foreground. This is pure white. So if you want to, you might clean out your water if you need to. Get straight up white. We want some really bright highlights on here and we're going to use this on our roof so i'm going to use my brush here and just going to run it and tap along that edge and add snow to my chapel oops and i'm putting my hand in my paint again <coughs> And I'm tapping it so that it kind of looks fluffy. That's all the only reason I'm doing this this way. Do it on your awning here if it's sticking up. Do it over the top of the windows just a little bit. And a little bit on the inside of the sill, so it caught right up there. A little bit over the top of your door, just slightly. Very little bit on your wreath. Tap the top part. You might switch to a smaller brush if you need to. I'm going to use the corner of my brush here and just tap a little bit of snow on my wreath. On it. Top and bottom. And a little bit on there, I got caught on the, whatever that is, 
This is going to have some snow along here, along here, along here. All the parts that might stick out and just have a little bit of a ledge for some snow. I'm going to even add a little bit of brighter snow to my tree in some places. I feel like it kind of could use some brighter snow. <clears throat> there and then along this top roof you're going to really do a little bit extra snow just along that bottom area there and part of the way up the very tip it's going to have a little bit of extra snow right there okay our stairs are just on either side of the door, just slightly on the outside of it. I'm just going to tap and come straight down. These are just completely covered with snow. They come down below the foundation and then they go straight across the underneath the door and then in stripes across here. And we might need some darker color underneath here to see the last couple of them. So I'm going to grab some of the burnt umber and add that to my s snow color and just add a couple of stripes there. I want to make sure they're getting straight. I feel like they're getting crooked. <clears throat> Get that burnt umber darker. Needs it darker right here. Easy, easy. All right, so now let's do our snow drifts down here. We're going to grab this color that was in our tree and some phthalo blue. I'm going to add a little bit more of the phthalo blue to it and brighten it up a little bit. We're going to bright, I'm going to do nice and bright. In fact, I'm going to get my bigger brush here. So this goes a little faster. So phthalo blue and white mixture and I'm going to kind of just come up and I'm using it sort of flat. I don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush here and I'm just going to kind of run it sideways. I've got all these other colors under here so I don't want to cover everything up but I'm sort of adding this blue and adding a little bit of white in sections. With this brighter blue in places. Now you can see how having all those other colors underneath really helps because they're all kind of peeking through. Let's do some snow drifts up around our stairs. So we're going to kind of come up here and just do just tapping in some nice thick white up around over the area there by our stairs. We'll kind of create a walkway maybe. Just tapping lightly and then maybe pulling it horizontal a little bit. So there. Adding some white bright highlights a couple places. Let's grab just a tiny bit of our yellow oxide, just a little bit, and do a little bit right here, like it's like a little maybe path. Just a little bit of it though. You don't want it to go too much. I don't want to look like yellow snow through there. 
and I think we're about done, honey. What do you think? We need to do snow, and we're... We need a splatter. We need some splatter. All right. Um, I need some I need some shadow right here. I'm going to grab that phthalo blue and do some shadow right here. Just right there, because it's not going to be quite that bright all the way. Okay. Wait. There we go. In fact, I'm going to use a little bit of it right here. Yeah, I like it. All right, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole effect. I like the colors, yeah. It's very kind of icy feeling. Good. All right, let's grab our fan brush here. Wet it down, grab a little bit of white. If we can get some clean white on a clean spot. You could use a toothbrush for this too. The wetter the paint, the bigger your snowflakes are going to be. So just keep that in mind. If you want to keep them small, you keep a little bit less water, but you need it to be thinned out, kind of a milky consistency in order for it to splatter. It just won't splatter with thicker paint. I'm going to protect my workspace here. Um, Cover up your monitor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to at least. Ooh, good, nice, nice big ones. Oh, that adds a lot. I like that. The longer that I do it, the smaller they'll get because I'll have all that thick paint kind of came off right at first. So the. I want to go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. I can well, see like uh, doing a sleigh ride or something like that. If it was on the beach, <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> I don't think they do snow on the beach. They, well, see, that's the only bad thing about snow is that it's always so cold. <laughs> it's true. It sure is pretty, but <laughs> yes. it isn't very cozy. Yeah, you're a northern boy. You... You grew up in the in the New Hampshire area, so yep. I'm going to do my example one too while I got it out, just because I can. Because <laughs> I, I think it's prettier. Splattering like a boss. That's right. I might as well. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching today. We really, really appreciate you sticking with us and for two and a half hours here. Two, two hours and 45, two hours and 45 minutes. minutes. This may be the longest one I've ever done. <laughs> it is that we've recorded. Yeah, that yeah. we've recorded together at least. I don't know. Uh -huh. So, um, and we did it six. So we did it. We, <laughs> <laughs> we're hardcore today. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Pushing through. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We will see you on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central. And we'll be doing another Christmas project. I think we'll be doing kind of a very whimsical short project on Tuesday night. So um, if you do this, please share it with me on my Thankful Art page on Facebook, um, or you can tag me on Pinterest or Instagram. All the links to my social media are down in the description, and please check out my channel after the show and subscribe if you haven't already, and we really appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.